Thank you uh, again for joining us. Um, as you know, uh, New York took a, a really significant historic step in the last moment of the legislative session by passing uh, marriage equality. And it was uh, on a personal level to be able to vote for that was about as humbling and, and moving uh, experiences you can have in public life. For it's, it was one of the rare moments when you, uh, you with, with a moment, really do uh, change people's lives directly and immediately. Uh, we try to do that in government whenever we can, but to actually go into people's families and homes and communities and, and create greater equality and more opportunity in a moment is, is a pretty extraordinary thing. And I know that for lots of folks who have been hoping and praying and, and wishing for this for many years, very briefly, uh, I'd like to uh, thank um, Borough of Manhattan Community College, President Antonio Perez, who uh, hosts us all the time and are about the greatest hosts you could hope for and really wonderful member of the community. Both as a community college, they serve folks uh, as a great ladder of opportunity and also as a community member, they're just a wonderful partner. So I thank them for their co-sponsorship and my colleagues in government. I will tell you that one of the great experiences of my life was at the age of 50 uh, asking someone to marry me. My mother thought that day would never come. She called it the Manhattan Miracle. And one of the great shocks in my life was when my wife started to tell people of her happiness, her friends in the LGBT community embraced her marriage. And my friends did the same. But there was a sense and a feeling that we had something special that people in society could not share in the LGBT community. And it weighed heavy on us. And we traveled to Connecticut to get married because we felt we had to make a statement. And it was a very powerful, personal message for each other that equality is for everybody and marriage is for everybody. And I am really proud that the State Senate came around through the leadership of Dan Squadron and others to make this momentous occasion a reality. Because of New York's passage, I do believe that it will not be long for other states and the federal government to follow. That is why it was so critical for this bill to pass in New York. Uh, we have to help out other states, not tell them what to do, just share our experience and help. Um, and we have to work with their state organizations and activists and our national organizations. And state by state, the more states, the merrier. They'll help us in our struggle to get rid of DOMA. Um, and uh, it will make it that uh, taxes, which I wish to be higher, will at least be fairer. And uh, if our partners live in another country, they can be with us here, as we can so often be with them there. Having New York pass marriage equality was an extraordinary first step in this long march we have towards equality. Because New York, as you know, is the first large state to pass marriage equality. Other states had passed it, but none as large as New York. And we can really become the bellwether for the rest of the country. Now, on the federal level, we have an impediment because we have this, these fantastic rights and privileges here in New York State, but the federal law, the Defense of Marriage Act, prohibits those rights and privileges being earned on the federal level and those protections being placed. Uh, so if you move out of state or go to another state in the United States, that those rights and privileges will be protected. So we have to repeal the Defense of Marriage Act, and it's one of our highest priorities on the federal level. Senator Dianne Feinstein has already introduced a bill. I'm an original co-sponsor. We've had the first hearing ever on the Defense of Marriage Act. It was incredibly helpful because we began to establish a record of what does this corrosive poli policy do to families? What does it do to loving couples in America when one spouse dies? What rights and privileges and protections are undermined and not available to those families when that spouse dies? 
And I see marriage equality and gay rights in this country as being the civil rights march of our generation. And it is so important that we look to how we can begin to frame this as an issue of fundamental fairness, fundamental equality, and making sure every American family has those rights and protections. Because in my generation, unlike my mother's generation and my grandmother's generation, in my generation, so many gay couples are having children. And all of the state benefits and federal benefits often accrue to protect children, protect children in times of, uh, of terrible, um, you know, sad stories. So when a spouse dies, how do you make sure that those children are protected? If both parents die, how do you make sure those children are protected? And with all of these families in our communities who are having children, we want to make sure every American family is fully protected. So I am your advocate, I am your ally, we will succeed in this march for full equality, and I look forward to the next battle. Under uh, DOMA, mm -hmm. um, the New York equality means, obviously, that there's a lot of federal benefits. It also means that the full faith and credit of New York State doesn't need to be respected by others. Is Correct. That, I, I, I mean, is that, is that a common thing to say, and what if that happened with driver's licenses? What if that happened in, in other areas? Well, we, you know, in other uh, areas of jurisdiction, um, sometimes there's federal preemption, sometimes there's not. And that's on a law by law, case by case basis. Um, when you do have federal preemption, it means the federal standard is the standard. Eventually, we want to have full marriage equality on the federal level, and that is a long-term goal that we will have. In the meantime, let's at least repeal the Defense of Marriage Act so that your marriage here in New York can get the full benefit anywhere you are in the country. And I think it's really important that we, we peel back this very, very negative, corrosive, unfair, uh, and discriminatory policy. Well, thank you very much, Senator Squadron, for calling us all together for this very important forum. Uh, the Senator is a very tough act to follow, and she brings us really the latest with regard to what's happening or could, happening, could happen or definitely won't happen in Washington. And we have a, a very distinguished panel of experts here. So I feel like there's really not that much for me to offer by virtue of additional information that uh, you may not already know. So I'm here really uh, at the Senator's invitation to just say congratulations. Congratulations to the LGBT community for finally achieving marriage equality. But more importantly, congratulations to all of us, everybody, because New York has always stood for equal rights and for too long we had denied ourselves in this state of our proper status while well, we reclaim the leadership. And now that marriage equality has been achieved in New York State, uh, New York will once again lead the rest of the country in ensuring that this is a country where everybody is deemed equal under the eyes of the law. So uh, congratulations. We have a great panel to hear from. And I uh, look forward to the next big fight that we're going to take on. I don't know what that is yet, but if we hang tough like we did here in this case, we will surely persevere. Thank you very much. Leading up to this day, uh, Lambda Legal, one of my colleagues, Susan Summer, was, was lead counsel in a uh, marriage litigation case where we tried to bring marriage through the courts to New York. And uh, uh, as the Senator said, our mission is, rec is working toward the full recognition of the civil rights of people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, and people with HIV. And we do it in three main ways. Uh, lit impact litigation, which means we try to bring cases, uh, we're not a legal service organization, we try to identify cases that are going to have impacts beyond the case itself, that are going to set a precedent or going to make a case and bring the human stories uh, to the courts and to the public. Uh, we also work in uh, public policy areas and through public education. Uh, and Hernandez was not successful in the courts, uh, although it was not, it, it was it left the door open uh, because the court said no, that New York State's constitution did not require that equality uh, through ma that marriage equality be made available to same-sex couples. But it said, but of course the legislature could, and I'm sure they never really thought or expected that it would happen, uh, not much less as quickly as it did. But what ha what that allowed our organization, the NYCLU, and the Pride Agenda to do is to continue talking to public officials and pushing in the courts 
for recognition of marriages that were performed elsewhere. Uh, at that point, Massachusetts uh, was allowing same-sex couples to marry. Pe uh, con other countries, including Canada, which obviously is a, is a very important neighbor in New York, uh, was allowing couples to marry. And so there were a lot of New Yorkers coming back to New York and, and um, filing for health benefits, uh, applying to their employers, uh, either a school district or public employer or private employer for uh, recognition of their marriage. And, and there were a number of state agencies that started looking at this more carefully as well. And all of that work really helped, I think, uh, to lay the groundwork for uh, many of the elected officials who ultimately voted on the bill to recognize that there was no reason to deny uh, marriage equality for same-sex couples. Um, as you heard from Alfonso David, there, there's a lot to do in terms of implementation of marriage here in New York. Uh, a lot of that is with government, and the Pride Agenda has been working with Alfonso and a lot of others um, on the tax pieces, on the marriage license pieces. Um, there's also a lot of private sector work, and, and some of you may have been reading in the paper, for example, uh, or seeing in the internet or elsewhere, uh, that there's been discussions among some major companies about whether they should do away with domestic partner benefits now that New York has marriage. And our response from the Pride Agenda is as long as you have a Federal Defense of Marriage Act, and as long as there are so many states that don't recognize our marriages, there are lots of reasons why people may choose not to get married. It may not be in their best interest if they're dealing with immigration, if they're going to go to another state and deal with adoption, uh, if they're in the military. It's great that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is winding down, but it's not down, done yet. There may be tax reasons, there may be, uh, and there may be emotional reasons. So my partner uh, worked in Massachusetts where for a long time it was legal to be married. I actually live in upstate New York. Um, and we could have gotten married, but we didn't want to. We live in New York. I'm a New Yorker. I wanted to get married here. And if I were dependent on him for my health benefits through his work, uh, and they were to say, well, sorry, we're doing away with domestic partner benefits, you need to get married, that would have been, I feel, a pretty unfair intrusion on what's a very personal decision. So there's lots of reasons to keep domestic partner benefits, but I, I just raised that as one example of there's lots of help that uh, the private sector needs in implementing marriage, so that's an important work for, for us to do. It's important for Social Security to be part of the conversation, and the reason is really very simple. You're all advocates. You all have voices. But in order to bring about change, it's important that you understand what our program means and what it means to our community. So looking at Social Security, it is the most successful social insurance program in our country's history. And this year alone, we'll pay $727 billion to 55 million Americans across the country. And in New York State, we're particularly proud 3.3 million people are living above poverty because we provide $44.5 billion to them in monthly cash benefits in each year. And having grown up in New York City, I think it's phenomenal still that we account for a third of those benefits in this great state. We pay $14 billion to 1.1 million retirees, workers with disabilities, and their families, including the families of workers who have died. So that brings home the importance of Social Security as a social insurance program and as a lifeline to not only our seniors but also to people in need. We administer also the Supplemental Security Income Program. It's a program based on need and it provides $51 billion to 8 million retirees, people with disabilities, people with visual impairments, regardless of age. So when you're looking at Social Security as a program, you need to understand the way that our rules are written now and the way that it affects the LGBT community. The New York Civil Liberties Union is actually the New York chapter, the New York affiliate of the American Civil Liberties Union. We have about 50,000 members um, and our mission is pretty simple, it, though broad. Um, it's to defend and promote uh, state and federal constitutional rights for all New Yorkers. And what that really means is we really, as an organization, cover really the, the whole gamut of civil rights and civil liberties issues uh, that you and your friends and other New Yorkers might face. Uh, but there's a number of 
uh, staff members, myself included, who do spend uh, the vast majority of their time specifically devoted to protecting and expanding the rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender New Yorkers. Um, and we also work very closely with the uh, National ACLU's LGBT Project, which is the project that is devoted to uh, expanding and protecting those rights across the country. And DOMA is, is quite unconstitutional. Uh, it violates the Equal Protection Clause of the Federal Constitution. And I'm happy to say we, we are, um, actually before marriage even passed, um, we are devoting lots of energy uh, to getting rid of DOMA. And we are doing that on various fronts. One of those fronts is that we've sued, our favorite thing to do. Um, and we, um, along with a number of other organizations, Lambda included, um, have filed constitutional challenges to DOMA in federal court. Our particular case is a case on behalf of a wonderful woman named Edie Windsor um, in New York. Uh, she was uh, someone who uh, married finally in 2007 in Canada, her partner of 44 years, Thea. When Thea died, um, in addition to having to suffer through that loss, had to suffer the indignity of DOMA and the, the practical reality of DOMA, which was, um, as a result of DOMA, unlike straight married couples, Thea's estate um, you know, passed to Edie, uh, but it did not pass tax-free, as it does for straight couples. Um, it, it, she had to pay taxes on it, and it was quite a significant amount. So in addition to the sort of horrible dignitary harm of having the federal government say, I don't believe your marriage was valid, I don't, I don't respect your relationship, um, she also had to suffer that harm. So we are in court, we are challenging it, and we are quite confident we are going to win. You know, I think that the, uh, the best metaphor here is, is actually marriage. You know, marriage is a great uh, event, a joyous event, and a party, and everyone comes, and for a moment, uh, everyone's very excited about the fact that you're getting married and joining your life, but then you're married, and then you uh, spend your life together, and it's the, as fulfilling a partnership as could be, but it is challenging, and it takes continuing work and focus and commitment, and I think marriage equality uh, and the fight for true LGBT uh, equal rights, uh, I think, fit, fit that same mold. This is a moment uh, that's hopefully energizing and, and exciting and joyful, but uh, also a moment that's the beginning of the next stage of, of a whole lot of work and, and fulfillment that's going to come through that work and through that commitment. So I look forward to doing it with all of you. I thank everyone here who helped make this happen for many more years uh, than I can imagine and, and uh, have given so much to it. And I thank especially our panelists who um, really did an extraordinary job educating us uh, and elevating the conversation and to do both uh, in the same uh, time, even if you're not a federal employee, is very, very difficult. So uh, thank you all very much, and thank you for coming.